I'll talk really quickly about Amanita because they'll kill you. <laughs> so you should, you want to know Amanitas and you want to know some of the basic characteristics of the genus Amanita. So this is a white spored mushroom. Everybody know, all the new people know how to make a spore print. What you want to do when you have an unknown mushroom is cut the cap off <coughs> with your knife. And especially if it's shaped like about like that, you want to cut the cap off like that. And then you want to put it on a piece of paper like this. And then you want to cover it with something, a coffee cup. And leave it for a few hours. And then after a few hours, the spores will drop out from the gills where they're being produced. And they'll make a pattern that looks like a bicycle tire with the spokes of a bicycle tire. So you have that nice little pattern of the spores. Newspaper is good because it's white and black, so if it's white spores, it'll show up. So the amanitas are white spored mushrooms, and the way an amanita forms, it forms out of an egg. And when it breaks out of the egg, I'll show you. Like this little guy, Amanita bisporigera, or Amanita verosa, or the destroying angel. Mm -hmm. This one's deadly poisonous. This mm -hmm. one will kill several of us if we ate it. So the Amanita was entirely inside that egg, mm -hmm. um, called the universal veil. Um, it breaks out. Sometimes when it breaks out, the top of the veil gets left in the cap as warts. So these are actually remnants of the egg that this Amanita brunescens broke out of. How much of that would you have to eat to die? Not very much. I would say that this one right here could probably kill you and I if we ate it, or at least send us to the hospital with severe liver damage. And the way it kills you is very tricky. At first you get sick. A couple hours after we ate this, we'd get sick. We'd vomit. We'd have a fever, and we'd sweat, and we'd have diarrhea, and um, we'd have the chills and the shakes for a few hours. And then we would get tired, and we would go to sleep. And then we would wake up in the morning and say to each other, boy, that was stupid. Were we drinking last night? What were we thinking when we ate that? And we would go back to work, and somewhere around 35 to 45 hours later, we'd start to die because the toxins in this do not get excreted. They get recirculated throughout your body mm. and they start to accumulate in your mm. liver. Your mm. liver tries to get rid of them, but mm. it can't. And the toxins in there, um, they actually fit into receptors on your cells in your liver and they explode it. So your liver cells start to explode and you end up... Uh, Needing a liver transplant needing a liver transplant at the best case scenario. Yeah. So yep. what happens, this is so dangerous because of the false recovery. Yeah. You think you're all better. You're not. <laughs> the bad shit is really just starting after you get better from the initial sickness. So Walt actually knows more about toxins, yeah. toxins than I do. Um, but when you look for amanitas, white spores, a little sack at the base, not always, one clue. And the little sack is often under the surface of the dirt. It Great breaks point. up sometimes. Dyna makes, when you pull it out of the ground, you might not notice it. That's why we encourage people to have a little pocket knife and dig these things out of the ground. Amanita rubescens doesn't have a sack. It just has a fat base. Some of these amanitas don't have rings. Rings are the other thing that you look for in the amanita. And a ring is another little veil that protects the baby gills. So when it's first formed, when it's in the egg shape, there's one egg that encloses the whole mushroom, and there's another little veil that protects the gills. Eventually, that falls away and it becomes a ring. And that's one of the other clues that you look for. Like all these Amanita Spreta should have a ring, wherever they are. Hmm. The ring's not really falling away. This is another good example of uh, Amanita vulveta, of a beautiful looking vulva at the base, or the universal veil, or the egg that it comes out of. So.
Amanita rubescens, people do eat some Amanitas, but forget I just said that, we do not eat Amanitas. Amanita jacksonii over so here, pretty. the American Caesars Amanita. People eat this all over the world, but we say don't eat it. This is sort of like being a dumb parent. Don't do what I say or do the opposite of what I say. Um, so that's the Amanitas anyway. Amanitas are dangerous. You want to learn them first. Learn how to identify an Amanita. The warts on the cap, um, fat base and a ring. This whole group, the Amanita Jamata group, um, usually has warts in the cap, but they wash off. Look, they're gone. Mm -hmm. But here, mm -hmm. they're still there. Has a nice uh, uh, base, but it's not really a sac. The sac clasps it. This one does not have a yeah. ring. Bill, uh, talk about puffballs. Okay, puffballs mimic an Amanita egg. If you pick puffballs, you want to cut that puffball in half and make sure you have a clear, um, solid flesh with no outline of an embryonic mushroom inside the egg.